That's not going to work at all. Change of plans. Hey, it's Pete. Welcome back to my workshop. So the last time around when I started hooking up the Centroid Acorn, one of the things I mentioned was that I wasn't going to be using the DB25 connector. Unfortunately, the signal that the 251X drives is expecting just isn't easy to get out of the screw terminals. The screw terminals on the Acorn are open collector outputs. And that's convenient because you can hook them up to almost any sort of voltage. The downside is the G251X is expecting a 5 volt driven signal and there are no pull up resistors on it. So it would get really sloppy because I would have to add pull up resistors to every single terminal and it's just, it's not going to look nice. So I decided to revert back. We're going to use the DB25 connector. So I went ahead and I made up a cable. Uh, we'll be using the, the step and direction for the first three axis, and then I'll be still using the enable signal that's coming out of the egg corn. Now the enable signal, uh, I think we have a little bit of inversion there to do because on one end it's called enable, and on the other device it's called disable. And I think the way it works out of the box is going to need to be flipped. So I went ahead and I made the cable and hooked that up to the step and direction on all three drives. And then I ran enable wires over from the first three axes as well, the X, Y, and Z. Hey, if you haven't done so already, I sure would appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel.
This is just basically a matter of repeating the same steps over and over for every axis. Now these, I think, are going to have to be inverted. All right, and z-axis. Also ended up replacing that fan on the heat sink. I got uh, a fan that was a little bit larger, moves a little bit more air, so we should really have no problems there. I went ahead and started wiring the outputs then. I'm bringing them down to terminal blocks at the bottom and I uh, just decided to color code them along with the matching wires. through now and adding the 48 volt supply. You can get terminal block jumpers that would jump across these and essentially tie them all together making them uh, the same voltage but I do not have jumpers that fit these particular terminal blocks and to buy them uh, is kind of expensive because they sell them in uh, huge sets, more than I'll ever need. So I am going to not do that, and instead I'm going to run three individual wires from the, uh, the terminal blocks up to the power supply connection. And uh, that'll just give me additional current handling capability anyways, so there's really nothing wrong with doing that. But this should be more current than the stepper drives will ever need.
uh, power this up and connect it to the drives, I'm going to want to verify that this thing has 48 volts coming out of it. I don't want to go and hook that all up and find out I have a huge problem after the fact. Kind of got held up there at the beginning with that change of direction I had to take on the feeding the stepper drives. But now that we got that sorted out, I think we should be pretty much ready to go. All right, just a quick review of where we are up to this point. Wired in the 48 volt power supply into these terminal blocks. These blocks will then feed our stepper drives. I'm not going to hook them up though till I get AC power to the power supply so that we know that this is actually putting out uh, clean voltage. I don't want to blow anything up on the drives. The inputs, uh, all eight of them, have been run down to terminal blocks here at the bottom. Uh, I've put a couple terminal blocks in for our 24 volt power supply, so the blue will be the minus side. The brown will be the plus 24 volts. Haven't done anything with the outputs yet because I believe some of these outputs are going to be used directly inside of the electrical cabinet. Uh, for things like uh, wiring uh, the spindle brake and uh, wiring the, the coolant pump, things like that. Uh, because actually right now, this, this relay up here is actually the relay that handles the spindle brake. 24-volt uh, power coming in here. Of course, the connections to the output boards. Our DB25 connector that gives our step and direction signal over to the G251X drives. Uh, the enable lines for X, Y, and Z going over to the drives. So the only thing left to do on the drives is to get power to them. And I also have to set the current uh, with a current set resistor on each one of these. Hey, if you haven't done so already, I sure would appreciate if you hit that subscribe button over there. And if you enjoy watching projects like this, giving it a thumbs up down there lets YouTube know you'd like to see more content just like it. That's about it for this time. I'll catch you next week.